Well, that was a movie. Hello, welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, this is Justin, and we just saw Eli Roth's Thanksgiving, which in case you didn't know, is a full-length adaptation of the fake trailer he made for Grindhouse years ago. It's blood. Son of a bitch. So if you're going to this expecting a serious <laughs> horror movie, Name Thanksgiving. You're wrong. <laughs> this is a beautifully hilarious parody, somewhat serious. It's like it's both at the same time. Like this mm. isn't, I think we used this phrase before. This isn't scary movie. This is like Scream, where it's both a parody of the genre and a horror movie at the same time. Or I guess an even better comparison at this point is Krampus. I don't know if you've seen it, but oh, Krampus for, for Christmas, this for Thanksgiving, but of course, Eli Roth. I haven't seen any of his movies, I don't think. I'm gonna assume I have not either. He does like gross out horror normally. Like, yeah. it's like, why do good plot and good stuff when you can just show gore the whole time? Fair. And so he's kind of a master of gore. It's just uh, not typically good movies, but he obviously knows what he's doing because this movie parodied the genre so well. <laughs> I thought this was hilarious. This I was love this. Funny. Oh yeah, cast. So, Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon was great. Uh, Tim Dillon has a small role in this. I love Tim Dillon. He was in it. Of course, also Patrick Dempsey, uh, Rick Hoffman, Gina Gershon, newcomer uh, Nell Verlack, or I'm, I'm not sure how to say her name. Never seen her anything before. She's the main character. I thought she was good. I thought overall the cast was good when uh, in the way that they were supposed to be. Like, there's a lot of overacting on purpose. Yeah, everybody filled their role. Yeah, to fit the bit. Like I mentioned Tim Dillon, at one point he's in a scary scene and like there's like, he hears a sound so he turns around and he goes, gulp, and you're like, that's, see, like, that's the level of acting, but it's intentional, and it's hilarious, and this movie from the first scene is going 100 miles per hour. It's hilarious. That opening scene was uh, quite legendary. It was also very reminiscent of Krampus, because that's essentially how Krampus starts, too. Obviously, much more over the top. This movie is... I, I shouldn't compare it too hard to Krampus because this is so much more over the top in every way than Krampus <laughs> is, especially on the gore level. There's quite creative gore at times. Yeah, no, especially some of the uh, early kills. Really, really interesting. Some things I would have never thought of. These writers have spent, they have spent their entire lives just thinking of creative ways to... It's Eli them. Roth. He's got a fucked up head. <laughs> I know he does. I'm not like a big gore fan or horror gore fan or whatever but in certain cases when it's done creatively and in an amusing way I just I was giddy <laughs> the whole movie I was like this is fun this is so much fun I was laughing at everything kind of reminiscent of Renfield although Renfield wasn't really horror like this no, one Renfield but, was far more comedy than yeah. gore horror but they didn't have its moments but in the same way of like the horror the, the gore of it the kills of it are so ridiculous that you're just like this is awesome this yeah. is fun <laughs> I was wondering like the crowd I wasn't sure how much of the crowd knew it wasn't a hor like a straight horror movie at first versus comedy because mm. Like it, it felt like it took the crowd a little while to warm up to how goofy the shit was. I can say the trailer didn't guarantee that no. it wasn't gonna it was gonna be goofy. It, yeah, it kind of figured it might be, but you know, you never it you never was one hundred percent sure. Yeah, it didn't fully sell it from the trailer. You're like, I can't tell if this is what it was or just a bad horror movie. You can't yeah. really tell. I think you needed to know who Eli Roth is and what he did with the fake trailer before. Even me knowing all of that, I was like, oh, please don't actually try to make this a good movie. <laughs> and he didn't. I mean, he did in a way. And he made it fantastic. <laughs> I will say, so if I have one complaint, I felt like it just went on maybe 10, 15 minutes too long. I was kind of like, I was done with it by the time it ended. There was... There was a, multiple points I thought the movie would end, and there were a couple of points where I thought it would end. I'm fine with where it ended up, yeah. but yeah, they, they, they probably could have ended a scene or two earlier. Yeah, I just had a little bit of fatigue with it, um, because, I mean, the plot obviously wasn't the focus of it, 
when you know in in, in any yeah. comedy whenever whenever a comedy plot has to be wrapped up that always can be the worst part of the movie because it's like all right well we have to go through all of this and we don't right, really right. care and frankly the plot kind of stopped making sense a little bit when they start wrapping stuff up like you're just like well what how does the timeline of these events work <laughs> how is this person here and then there they immediately <laughs> or drove i don't know we don't know we never got a map of this town it could be what Whatever we want it to be, <laughs> and so it's like, yeah, okay. From a writing standpoint, that's where that's where it started to break down. Yeah. But I mean, the rest of it is just so much fun and so cheesy, like intentionally so. Like it's it's just brilliant, even when it's not pointing out that it's stupid. There's still really subtle things of how stupid it is because of the the genre it's parroting. Like for instance, there's a room where there's a bunch of these mannequin heads. I guess it's supposed to be like the makeup room. Yeah, or it something. seemed like a beauty department in the school or something. Like they're I learning don't know to like why. do hair. Sure. Okay. Whatever. Regardless. One of the girls is hiding there, and instead of just hiding under the table, she hides her head among the mannequin heads. Like, that helps at all. And that's just such a brilliant, <laughs> stupid little thing that it's like, Eli Roth, he is a fan. He's a student of horror because he knew exactly how to parry it. <laughs> he parried it so well. He also, obviously, as I pointed out, is a, is a friend of Tarantino. And he was like, all right, I'm going to sprinkle in a little something for you, Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a little. It's all made up there. <laughs> it takes really talented people to make a movie bad in this way and have it work the way that it did. True. I, like I said, I enjoyed it so much. So much. I got to say, I was actually a little surprised... The movie actually had some solid jump scares at times. Good point, yeah. It, 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 it didn't just let you linger with the tension where you know it's coming, you're just waiting. Is it going to be behind, above, left, right, which way? No, it actually really hit you with some actual yeah. jump scares. The one that we, we mentioned when we were watching it, I won't say it now, we'll yeah. wait for spoilers, but that one was like, that was one of the moments, and there were several throughout the movie, where I said to myself, damn, Eli Roth is... Like, he knows what he's doing. Because mm -hmm. that jump scare, I was like, that takes a really knowledgeable director and yeah. writer to make that work as well as it did. Because I don't care for jump scares at all because most of them are so dumb and so predictable. Yeah. Jump scares can be fantastic, but they're usually so lazy. These ones weren't, you know? They were well done. They were well thought out while also maintaining the overall feel of this movie, which is very tongue-in-cheek. So it's like, it at no point goes too far into horror where you're like, well, I have to take this seriously. And then you're like, oh, and it's goofy. It's just the whole time you're like, oh, this is fun, but also silly. You can't you can't, you can't, put your main villain in a, a John Carver mask and have <laughs> me think it's not going to be a little silly. <laughs> also, take it all seriously. Oh, the dialogue, too, was so... <laughs> Like, oh, it was so good. Like, oh, guys, it's going to go up on the internet. <laughs> yeah, but also just like, because the bad guy for the most part doesn't talk. But near the end of the movie, he starts getting into the 1980s slash yeah. 90s slasher role where he's just saying one-liners every two seconds. <laughs> and they were amazing. I loved his lines. I'll save them for spoilers, but some of them were fantastic. Yeah, no, they, had to, they gave him some good material at the end. <laughs> it was so good. I loved it. It's a very reminiscent of a lot of slasher films you've seen before it's i mean it's i know what you did last summer except for thanksgiving <laughs> so i know what you did last thanksgiving it is essentially that for the most part and so it's got the whodunit element to it so and but don't like go into it expecting oh this is going to be really intriguing i can't wait to solve this mystery the greatest mystery of all time it, it, it's not <laughs> it's, but that's not the point i had a certain point during this movie it was fairly early on because, you know, I go into the going like, all right, I'm going to try and figure out who the, the guy is. I'm going to be looking for. And then I just stopped myself. I was like, I just I want to be pleasantly surprised when it happens. I had my guesses up until the very end when they started like narrowing it down. It was yeah. like, oh, yeah, it could be anybody, really. Yeah, literally, there was at least 10 characters that you think, oh, that could be them. Yeah, no, they, they did a good job of keeping you guessing. Giving and then, you options. Yeah, yeah. 
realistic options. You know there's a certain select group that it isn't, but then, I mean, there's motives abounding, yeah. you know? It's like, oh, well, this kid did that, this adult did that, and everybody's got a reason to want to kill people that you've seen used as motivation in movies before. Oh, if yeah. you enjoy gross-out comedy horror stuff, it's definitely for you, even if it's not necessarily your thing. If you like stuff like Krampus, or I know what you did last <laughs> summer, check this out, too. It's a masterful job by Eli Roth. He really impressed me. I haven't seen any of his movies, so I didn't really have have a good opinion of him outside of yeah, I know you know his acting in in Inglorious Bastards. I thought he was good in that. I thought this was fantastic. This movie is surprisingly. I went in thinking, oh, this movie will be fun and stupid, and it was. But it was so fun and stupid. It was one of my favorite movies of the year. No, <laughs> I, I I have to say I am not a horror movie fan. I rarely ever see them. Definitely never alone. I'm not much of a gore. I mean, movies have gore. I, I got used to that. I'm not, yeah. I can take it or leave it. But. I have to say, I went into this mostly because I'm rewatching Suits, and I'm very pleasantly surprised and happy <laughs> I went to see it. it. It was very solid. Great, great yeah. movie. Honestly, I'm giving it a seven. What are you giving it? I'll give it a seven and a half. Oh, hey. All right, so we're getting spoilers now. Uh, let us know what you guys thought, though. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks, guys. Bye. So, spoilers. The one-liners, man. <laughs> so he cooks the one bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, I knew she could make a great Thanksgiving dinner and then he's like oh you should really thank her she's been cooking all, all day. day he pulls off the, <laughs> to show her face oh, oh my gosh oh. and he had a couple more in that scene that I'm forgetting right now but they just kept coming yeah, for no, a little he, while that he was on fire during the good. dinner scene I loved it I was cracking up <laughs> you know you've been prepping for that the whole movie <laughs> I'm gonna get that one there that one there that one <laughs> I got the whole speech but uh, we were mentioning the creative kills or the creative gore of it. Um, Man, that first personal kill was, yeah. was interesting. I did not expect some of those things. Probably should have seen it coming, but... I think it was... Maybe it wasn't in the trailer. I saw it somewhere online, and it wasn't like it was in the fake trailer uh, that was years ago, but with the face being frozen onto the, the door or whatever. I had already seen that, but it was still, it was really good. Yeah, it gets that. her in the water, throws yeah. her right on it. It was fun. It yeah. was legitimately fun. Chases and her outside to the car. Cooking the, the lady. He, like, he opens the door and you're like, what is he gonna do? He's not gonna have mercy on her. And he's like, I forgot to put in the timer. And he sticks the oh timer into her chest. Yeah. And then so it shows her done cooking and it pops out. Love that it's just a little bit of comedy flair to these moments dude the the part in the the parade when the float crashes through the car and oh the, the yeah mask goes through his face and the nose like flips up i was like oh my god like the yeah, practical the effects <laughs> yeah of that and then it's just like a fountain of blood and his daughter's like ah <laughs> Oh my god. And then the <laughs> clown, man, as soon as the clown walks in the background, I'm like, no, no, please, don't drag this. I had a fear of clowns for years as a kid. All because of it. Hey, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the good jump scare. The, the, the best jump scare. There was a couple of good ones, but the best one is, so they're, they're going around the school, and you know the killer's in the school. Yeah. Um, but then they're like, huh, that's weird, like the trash can is moved, or like the... the the push cart for the trash and but you're showing them and then it cuts to showing their view and the trash is on the right and it gives you less than a second between you turning and looking at that from the jump scare coming on the left oh yeah it was so well directed so well choreographed any more time you would have had time to register that it was about to happen and yeah it just bang but you're like it. you you just have enough time to think Oh, they're pointing out this thing. So you're looking there, yeah. and then it's the opposite direct. So well done. There was so a lot, well there done. There was a lot of misdirect in this. Yeah. It's just something over here, or I'm over here now. And I, I, I like how they use that. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Like, another one was, so he is chasing the girl who stepped in the puddle of blood, so he sees her footprints. Oh, yeah, so he yeah. knows where she is, but she doesn't know that he knows. She thinks she knows where he's going, and then all of a sudden he turns and leaves. And she's like, why did he turn and leave? And then he knew, because, oh, well, she's hiding right here, so I'm going to go around here it was and stab through the wall. It seemed, like she le it seemed like she purposely left the trail of tracks forward yeah. to, like, lure, lure him over there. So she's hiding there with the wine bottle she found in the fridge. Yeah. She's about to knock Barefoot, him out. by the way, which I thought was a yep. funny joke because she was bare feet <laughs> Oh, I didn't even notice that. No, like, ah. Nice, nice. <laughs> okay, so the part that I was saying didn't make sense in the timeline was so like okay he set up this whole dinner 
and he's trying to kill them, and then he's chasing her because she's getting away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she's over at this area, and then he's there, and you find out, oh, it's because I had the guy on my trunk, I was getting ready to kill him, but then he hopped out and hit me. And you know, I got changed, because... We haven't how, spoken about who he is yet, but... How did it, any of this actually happen, no, unless that, he was lying about it? That doesn't make any sense. I, I don't think he was lying about it. I think the actual injury was real, but and I think the kid was actually kidnapped, but, like... Unless... How okay. does he go from chasing her to changed on duty in the car, ready to set the kid up? I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm assuming he already had him, but, like... I, yeah. Was he just wearing the uniform underneath? Maybe all times? I don't know. I think so. The, that scene was actually the moment that I I thought the movie gave away that he was the bad guy because I mean the, it made it pretty obvious that it was either him or the other guy, and they kind of set up the other guy a little hard. But the because the 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 bad guy had the melted side of the mask, and then they showed that the cop had the beat up ah. side of the head, and I'm like that's foreshadowing, yeah. or it's got to be right. I should have made that connection. Yeah. And so at first I thought it was like. His face got burned, and then I was like, "No, he got hit." But I'm like, "It's still foreshadowing." So I was like, "That was the that because, like I said, I wasn't trying to really solve it. I couldn't completely turn off my brain and stop. But he wasn't on my radar until that moment, frankly." My, my thought, without any real reason, I just thought it could be him because he wasn't around much. Was the yeah. was the current boyfriend? Right, and they said like he's obviously got some sort of military expertise or something. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, that kind of eliminates the kids, but eh, I thought it was the, the weapon stealer else? guy. Honestly, that's who I thought. It, Started, uh, until he gave the one guy the gun, they started making it seem like it might have been him or the father or something. Yeah, even after he gave him the gun, I still thought it might be him because remember, uh, the gun didn't work. Well, he had the safety, he had the safety on. on. He forgot to turn yeah. it off because the guy told him to put the safety on so he doesn't shoot his dick off. Yeah. It was a smart move, but then the guy got scared, didn't right. turn the safety off. But yeah, they had so many like uh, red herrings there. Like the nerdy kid, who obviously he wasn't big enough to be him, yeah. but he thought, oh, he's got the motive. And then there was the new cop who looked like him, and mm. so he thought it could be him. But then he was like, well, obviously it's not, because that would be too obvious. Yeah. Most of the red herrings were too obvious, but then, like you were saying, you thought it was either the boyfriend or the ex-boyfriend the whole the, time. The ex-boyfriend seemed a little too obvious. Yeah, it felt too he was scream. He was away, yeah. broken arm. Clearly, was mad at the people. Had a lot of motivation. Didn't yeah. want to go. Yeah, no, it's just way too much. I also thought it was the dad at one point. I thought it was like everybody mm -hmm. at, at one point or the other. Like okay. I, I just, I legitimately had no idea until I saw his face was fucked up, and I was like. Oh, it's Patrick Dempsey. <laughs> <laughs> and then I still didn't know how or why, because like I said, the timeline didn't make any sense, but then they're like, yep, it's him. I'm like, okay, sure. Whatever you say. I definitely caught the uh, little bit of uh, sexual tension at the beginning between the two yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But like, I, I didn't think... I didn't take whole... it that far, no. Yeah, so like, the, the, the killer is, is uh, if we haven't Patrick been clear Dempsey. enough already, the killer is Patrick <laughs> Dempsey, the... the, the, the the cop. Sheriff, cop, yeah. whatever. Um, and it, the whole motive for it is because in... The, the, well, we don't even say what the first scene is. The first scene is... A mall rush. A mall rush thing. on Black Friday. Yeah. Because you get, Rick Hoffman's character is offering a 50% off sale or whatever the sale was. And everyone... Waffle press. And, and so the, 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 main, the main group of kids, uh, since the one girl is Rick Hoffman's daughter in the movie, uh, he owns the store, they get to go in first and they they literally stand at the front of the store and just like hold up the shit, consumer goods yeah. and they cause a riot yeah. because they're they got let in 10 minutes early mm -hmm. that obviously causes a stampede with just tons of people getting killed by the one security guard gets crushed on the way in multiple people get trampled uh they break through the glass door so somebody gets his uh carotid jugular. yeah his, carotid, <laughs> his uh, jugular cut on the way in the one lady gets hit in the head by a cart. Uh, the oh yeah, yeah. That then then proceeds to rip off part of her scalp. Oh my yeah. gosh! Ah oh, yeah, that one. And uh, that was also yeah. I forgot like Eli Roth directed it because the first scene was so Krampus similar <laughs> that I was just like in the Krampus mindset. And then the over the top gore started happening. I'm like oh we're not Krampus. Tim Dillon's character gets introduced. He's like it's fucking Thanksgiving, you animal. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that part. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you, people? Oh <laughs> I expected gosh. him to die there, but then they had to keep him around because he was going to get murdered later. But I thought he was going to get trampled, and the other guy got trampled. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was it was hilarious. I really enjoyed this movie. No, it, no, this was... This was... <laughs> I, I was pleasantly surprised. I, this, honestly... It, it, 
this could become like a yearly thing for me. I could see myself watching this every Thanksgiving. The last 10, 15 minutes do kind of ruin the watchability for me a little bit, but maybe I'll just turn it off before the movie's over and just I enjoy mean, the rest of it. you've seen the ending. Do you really need to see the explanation of why it's happening no. again? Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, because, I mean, I watch Krampus every year pretty much. This could just be the Thanksgiving version. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. They're going to they're gonna get you a holiday movie that's not quite a holiday movie every year. Yeah. For every single one. It's, just wait for oh. the Juneteenth horror movie. <laughs> Wasn't that, wasn't that the blackening? <laughs> oh, you didn't see it. It, it happens on Juneteenth. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we had to think. Thanks for watching, guys. Please comment, let us know what you guys thought. Also, don't forget to like, share, and like I said before, subscribe. Bye. See ya.